people and I'm very grateful for this um, who have come forth and interacted with me privately regarding anxiety you know because I've been 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 like been mentioning that um, I have an ongoing relationship with um, anxiety and so I feel that um, it has been something that has been anticipated for they know at some point I need to dive into anxiety and sooner rather than later our journey for the next couple of sessions is going to be centered on anxiety and I'm really going to try my absolute best to just give a more rounded um, relatable um, relevant knowledge of what anxiety is so I'm going to repeat the whole thing about all of this being a shared experience and in order for it to be a shared experience i really really need to get feedback from everyone who's willingly engaging in all of these mental health topics and all of these mental illness topics in all of this mental health awareness you know i i need your honest engagement and there's so many platforms to do it um like facebook instagram um twitter um the reason for this is that I, I need to know where you're at with all of this information. Like if it's relatable, if it's helping you, if it is um, being received the way I intend for it to be received, you know. I mean, if you feel that some things on the previous videos weren't in depth as much as you would have liked them to be, just reach out, let me know, and I will try my absolute best to revisit them um to make sure that we move as a collective we become conscious and aware about mental health and mental illnesses as a collective you know because i don't want to be leaving anyone behind i don't want to have um those kind of engagements where people are listening to me for an extended period of time and at the end of it all they still have no idea um, what mental health is about, how to engage with it, or what to do with the knowledge given. So again guys, it's very important that you do engage to your heart's content. So taking into consideration the amount of people who have um, reached out to me concerning anxiety, how to deal with it, their own personal experience, what they found to help, what they're still struggling with, I feel that it is very important that we thoroughly unpack um, what anxiety is so that people, so that we all just leave knowing um, more about what anxiety is, our relation to anxiety, um, maybe a possible onset of um, an event that might have brought about this anxiety into our lives. Or, um, I don't know, what we see anxiety as, how we relate to it, um, what it means to us, what it means for us, and also just how to be aware when we're anxious, 
or be aware when we're acting from an anxious place and just know what to do you know and so that has made me decide that we need to unpack each theory on its own you know to avoid information overload to avoid anything being possibly getting lost in translation or being lost in interpretation or in relation right so for today we're only going to be focusing on what anxiety is according to the psychoanalytic approach now psychoanalysis is one of the very first emerging psychology theories and it was founded by someone who somewhere along history was known and referred to as the father of psychology sigmund freud and there are actually a lot of concepts a lot of concepts um within the psychoanalytic approach psychoanalysis and today i'm going to try my absolute best to stick to the ones that strictly apply to anxiety and what anxiety is about and of course if we come across a term that um i know not everyone knows it's literally like psychoanalytic jargon i will explain it in as much or to the extent that it relates to anxiety because i don't want to put too many ideas our focus for now and for the next couple of sessions is anxiety and yeah okay so i do need to mention that because we are going to move around from theory to theory that maybe today you might not feel like psychoanalysis or um, Freud's approach completely encapsulates what anxiety is to you, your experience of it, your relationship to it and that's okay but I do guarantee you with complete confidence that there is something for you to learn and there's probably a lot more that you can relate to and probably discover about your experience with anxiety right and yeah so the first thing is that psychoanalytic approach defines anxiety as a feeling of dread um, concerning the feelings emotions and memories that we repress right the ones that we just I don't know how you repress emotions just lock them away in the back of your mind and throw away the key or try to throw away the key something that you push down to just make sure that you don't feel it for extended periods of time or at least until you're ready to deal with it and basically according to psychoanalysis anxiety would then be all of those feelings being brought up to the surface and you are suddenly aware of all of them um, and that is where the overwhelming feeling of anxiety comes from because you weren't prepared and it basically feels like your mind is sabotaging you like girl you know i wasn't ready for this like why is this happening um, it goes on to further explain that anxiety can also be a tension um, of maybe feelings or emotions that motivate us to do something and the base of it all is that um the way Freud decides to or has developed a way of explaining the human psyche and the human personality is by using three parts which is the id, the ego and the super ego and I'm going to touch on that just now and he basically says that these three compartments are in conflict and that is what causes us to have anxiety right and so the base of it all is that to psychoanalysis anxiety is just this this impending danger that we are being warned against so as I explained before the way psychoanalysis approaches um, anxiety is from the underlying tone the underlying explanation that it is basically when your id your ego and your super ego are just in conflict with each other right so to shed light on this
pleasure it basically functions on the pleasure principle right it's the the part of our personality or our psyche that functions according to the pleasure principle right like satisfying every wishful desire in this moment it's about gratification right and the easiest way to explain it is to say imagine a baby right an infant uh whatever they want whatever they they desire whatever they feel like they need in this moment they don't care whether it's three o'clock in the morning four o'clock they want it satisfied right now and they will cry they will throw tantrums they seek no reason unlike the it the super ego is our moral compass right we create this moral compass for ourselves um, when we start to realize that there's a good and bad there's a right and wrong and how we relate to it but what is actually very interesting is that according to Freud this moral compass is actually developed through um, the phallic stage of our upbringing which is around three to five years old so already children um, between the years of three to five have a very strong um, connection and strong development and sense of knowing what is wrong what is right what is good what is bad and that part of us keeps on developing as we interact from with society and depending on who we look up to and how we regard what that person says you know like it can be a sense of right and wrong that comes from our parents it comes from um, society at large that comes from whoever we look up to and whose word and advice we value right and also another function of the super ego is to just um, basically prevent the id from tapping into a lot of those desires that are forbidden by society right and um, yeah it keeps the id in check and just make sure that it does not become the leading force in your psyche or your personality, right? And then the ego, the ego is fully conscious, right? The super ego is a bit unconscious and a bit conscious, but um, the ego is fully conscious, which means it deals a lot with reality and it plays the role of basically the mediator or the referee between the id and the super ego making sure that both are satisfied but in a way that doesn't bring any harm to you in a way that doesn't scar you in a way that you're still able to integrate like a normal person a functional person actually because like what is normal a functional person uh, live a balanced life or what you perceive to be a balanced life able to integrate within society right and why these three components of your personality are important is because psychoanalysis uses these components in order to explain what anxiety is how people react or respond to feeling anxious and the coping mechanisms basically that people have put in place have structured um often practice in order to either avoid anxiety deal with anxiety or process anxiety
So the main function of these ego defense mechanisms, they are basically a way for the ego to find a way to directly deal with rising tension, rising anxiety, right? But in the given moment, it has not yet found a solution, but you still need to be able to function as a person with responsibilities, a person with tasks to fulfill, right? So imagine an anxious situation one that just heightens your anxiety goes right up shoots right up zero to 100 your defense mechanisms are likely to kick in then because perhaps you're not in a situation a position or place to fully deal and engage with your anxiety and still be able to continue with your day so instead of putting everything on hold for your anxiety your defense mechanisms basically shield you until you are ready to engage now this can actually be regarded as normal behavior but when it is used for extended periods of time and also as a crutch for someone to perhaps avoid reality and actually dealing with anxiety if they're just constantly putting in defense mechanisms defense mechanisms defense mechanisms and they never actually engage with the source of anxiety then it becomes unhealthy right so what i'd like is that as we move through all of these um all of these defenses that instead of trying to figure out who in your life has ever done any of these to you figure out where you might have been wrong in using your defense mechanism as a crutch and never revisiting the situation the event in which a defense mechanism kicked in to try and realize that you should not have acted that way or maybe you hurt somebody with your actions or maybe you just need to hold yourself accountable or you something needs to be fixed right um and also i hope that at the end of this session as you become aware of all of these mechanisms you will honestly honestly practice more love more light more grace because now you will be aware that a lot of the times right when people behave a certain way towards you a way that angers you a way that maybe you feel is rude or a way where you're just like ah it's a brother not being herself perhaps it's a defense mechanism that just kicked in because you don't know what might have happened before you guys met before you guys engaged before you guys bumped into each other and so it's important to hold a lot of grace um, for people to be able to unravel in your presence without judgment and then find themselves find their peace and once they are centered again be able to come back to you and say you know what i i acted out of order a couple of hours ago i'm sorry i was going through one two three or even just leave it at i'm sorry you know um we've got to stop putting restrictions on how people need to act or behave around us i'm not saying entertain toxic behavior i'm not saying entertain um abusive behavior or rude behavior or i'm not saying that but I think we can all relate when I say that everyone goes through those moments where they're just not their best self and they start functioning from that point, from that well of I'm not my best self. And we need to allow space for the same people who might have acted out of order to return and say, you know what, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you this, I didn't mean to say this to you. Um, I was angry, I was frustrated, I was feeling anxious about a certain thing that happened. So this is about creating healthier relationships, more functional relationships, honest and open relationships with this newfound knowledge. And yeah, I really just hope that it works not just in terms of you understanding your own anxiety and how you relate to anxiety 
but more so how you relate to others when you are anxious and how they relate to you when they are anxious. So Sigmund Freud has 12 defense mechanisms and I know that um, with the advance of psychology, parts of psychology and mental health, you might do research and find that there are more defense mechanisms, but there's only 12 which relate to the psychoanalytic approach, right? And the first one is compensation. Now, how this works is perhaps someone or people or society or even yourself convinced you that there's a certain quality about yourself that is not good not good enough that is rejected by society that is just not on par right for example um you might feel that you're not beautiful or a lot of people might have told you not beautiful and you start to believe it and internalize it right and how compensation works you start working on other attributes or other characteristics and start really really working like extremely hard on them in order to just compensate for this lack that you feel and so whoever might feel not beautiful because of um, what society said or what they believe to be the standard of beauty or just the lack within self they might really start being dedicated to their studies full time and stop being an overachiever doing 20 subjects at school and so to them being an academic overachiever compensates for how they don't feel as beautiful as they would like to or as beautiful as they should and i think we can all agree that this is a mechanism that needs to be revisited because a lot of self-love needs to be poured into this individual they need to love themselves tremendously um, they need to explore themselves you know and just for an extended moment as long as it takes shut out society shut out what every everyone else expects shut out any other voice except the guiding voice that is leading them to love and self-acceptance and also a lot of self-forgiveness you know because in such situations we need to actually forgive ourselves for believing we're not worthy or believing we're not beautiful or believing that we were not godly you know and it's very important to just engage in these practices because i don't i don't want to believe that compensation is a defense mechanism that should be used across um a long extended and extended period of time however there can be a positive twist to it um for example if you have a family perhaps of dancers right and i say a family of dancers because most of them dance and they're very good at it and it just turns out that you're not you know and so you start pursuing another interest such as art or music and you tend to be really great at that and so just to I don't know match the excellence of your family you work really hard at it but in turn it improves your knowledge your skill and it makes you feel really good about yourself because you have found your craft that is a positive twist to compensation i'd like to think that so the second one is denial right and i think denial is one that just rings a bell in everyone's mind because we often use denial to cope with extreme situations when the truth is just too much to bear and it's mostly associated with grief right and um an example can be if um there's a loss within the family a death of a loved one and you you can't handle that you know a lot of people actually deal or go through grief by first um going through the denial phase of it and then it takes some time to accept the truth bit by bit and it's very obvious in this case why this defense mechanism kicks in because i mean the truth is too much the shock is too much but life keeps going on unfortunately and you need to be able to integrate within society and still fulfill your responsibilities so as you still try to as you're trying to accept this truth 
denial is just there to shield you from unpacking too much too soon and then falling apart to a point where you feel like you might not be able to put yourself back together um, another example can be a partner in an abusive relationship right constantly making excuses for their loved ones um, saying that no this person is acting out of character they actually love me no they care about me this is not them you know constantly making excuses because they're in denial of the fact that this is a dangerous relationship they could die within this relationship and it's complicated because of maybe a complexity of feelings attached or or anything you can think of you know that's just an example of how denial is used i'm pretty sure as soon as the word denial was mentioned you thought of like simpler examples but this is also one of the mechanisms that the ego just puts into place um until we're in a place or stable enough to actually deal with the truths of the situation so the third one is displacement right and this is basically taking out your anger and frustrations on a substitute target because the intended one is probably not receptive of how you're feeling does not understand you is not accommodating or accepting of your feelings or it puts in a compromising situation maybe a life-threatening situation or a life-altering one right for example if your boss really made you mad at work but you're afraid to speak out and stand up for yourself because you're afraid you might get fired and now you meet up with your partner later on and you just get mad at everything they do and you start shouting at them and and all of that that is displacement you're not exactly you're not exactly mad at your partner but at your boss but you can't take out those frustrations or if you are mad at your dad for scolding you before they even understood that you were innocent in this situation and then you go to school you go to class and you just exhibit like a lot of anger and frustration towards your lecturers your teachers because the intended target is just not hearing you out and you need to find a way to release so that is what displacement is so the next defense mechanism is projection and i'm pretty sure a lot of people are just thinking of all of the times where someone projected on them right so basically what projection is is when you attribute in the negative parts of yourself or the negative characteristics of yourself to another person to avoid dealing with them or owning them basically right and this often happens with things such as um, insecurity things such as insensitivity things such as lying you know when you accuse the other person of being what you feel you are or what you are you know um, it's actually like an avoidance technique the next mechanism is called reaction formation now this actually is witnessed a lot in movies especially like those goofy romantic comedy things right um, it's when you mask your negative emotions or negative reactions pertaining to a situation with like an overload of positivity but the positivity is not really real but you're just hiding how um, negatively affected you are and this can happen for example when you invite a friend over to come and spend some time with you or to go out to just have a meal or something and they turn you down and tell you that no they're busy they have a couple of things to do and your response instead of saying ah oh, i missed you i just wanted us to chill or something like that you start saying i'm busy too anyway i don't even know why i asked you know this and that and that and you just you know or you start saying things like um i'm trying to think of like positive way to end it I was saying like oh yeah i have things to do too i didn't think you'd say yes but you know I, it was worth a try anyway yeah I'll, I'll see you next you know like that whole positive energy of just overriding it to how deeply affected you are by whoever responded what to whatever your question was then there is rationalization now what this is is basically you reasoning with yourself um about something you might have done in order for it to make sense to you in order for you to validate your actions right for example um there's an exam 
um, that you're writing in the next two days, right? And tonight there's a party and all of your friends are done writing exams or their exams are like the following week so they have more time to prepare but you go to the party anyway because you didn't want to be the only one left behind and then you end up failing the exam and when you rationalize with yourself you say that ah you know 20 years from now when i look back on this moment i'm not going to remember failing every exam i'm going to remember the memories i created with my friends and the time we spent together i mean you you only live once um i'm not gonna waste the best years of my life not having the college experience things like that you start just rationalizing the decisions you made in order to feel better about what you did the next one is regression and what this is is basically reverting or relying more on your id responses right and these are like infant like responses childlike responses and the reason this is done how it's explained is that when you were a child maybe the world was a more happy place it was less threatening and you didn't have to deal with all of these responsibilities or all of this weight right and an example of how regression is acted out is perhaps in a heated argument right with um, your parent or with your significant other or friend you start reverting to childlike behavior like instead of just talking it out like adults you stomp out the room slam the door or you throw things around or you start screaming in a way that nobody can understand what you're saying just to have that moment where all the attention is on you so that you can make your point or it's like childlike behavior so we have three more left and the next one is called ritual and undoing now basically it is someone just overcompensating for their unacceptable behavior right um it can happen in the sense of if you forgot somebody's birthday no I'm not gonna say that's unacceptable behavior it happens <laughs> wait um, for example an absent parent comes back after many years and instead of trying to form a healthy relationship with you they start showering you with excessive gifts expensive gifts in order to try in their mind fill the void of the absence right um, another example can be in an abusive relationship right um, usually the perpetrator after um, abusing their partner their intimate partner will come back around and start excessively apologizing for their behavior and showering them with gifts and acts of kindness to just say that I'm sorry and all of the excuses that they use um, another one can be like if um, a parent just used very harsh language towards you and they feel bad and now they start buying you new phones and giving you whatever you want for dinner or yeah you guys get the whole concept of ritual and undoing um, the second last one is repression right and this is it's still a mystery you know it's one of the most interesting um, defense mechanisms and it's basically your mind not being able to deal with whatever you're encountering at the moment and as a result it's repressed deep into your unconscious right um, a simple example of this could be if you were really craving something like really badly like you were just you can't control it you know you repress it and repress it and repress it until it's in your unconscious and you don't act from that place anymore you completely forget about it and a more relatable one could be perhaps if any traumatic event happened and now when you're trying to explain it to someone who is in a position to intervene to help you you can't recall all of the events because your mind has repressed that um event very deep into your unconscious to help the rest of you 
to be able to move past it to move on in a way of being able to function right because the shock was too severe for you to process all of it and still be able to just continue and what's interesting about repression is that it's not something like you connect with your mind and just say okay repress no it happens without you say so it, it's like you initiate the process in terms of wanting to deal away with whatever it is that you're encountering whatever it is that you're feeling but everything after that how the thought goes so deep into your unconscious that you're not able to access it that is the mystery our last Freudian defense mechanism is called sublimation now this one unlike the others there's no negative or positive side to it it is just straight positive and basically it is taking all of your negative self-concepts or negative experiences in life and actually engaging with them in a way to make them positive and beneficial right for example um if you were in an abusive relationship right um instead of being in denial about it or repressing the experience you use it in order to help others perhaps get out of abusive relationships or not to also be in denial or repress the experience so you start joining groups joining movements in order to just assert yourself in that manner and another example could be um if you're like addicted to drugs and you or alcohol and you join like alcoholics anonymous right instead of being in denial of that entire experience or um going through any other of the any other of the defense mechanisms you start using your experience to help others once you are clean and once you are stable so it is basically a defense mechanism that inspires transformation and that inspires change for me learning about these defense mechanisms has actually helped me not only understand myself better or understand the way my anxiety tries to mask itself um, but also how others choose to process their feelings or choose to process their anxiety I mean even though there's already an improvement on all of these mechanisms and there's probably 20 or more but even within these 12 there's a lot of options to choose from so it's not for us to dictate how a person chooses to cope in that given moment but in order to have healthier relationships in that moment of heightened or elevated anxiety it's important to just give a person enough space to process whatever they're processing it's important to not take anything too personally and it's also important that if they don't see what they're doing to gently approach them with love with light with grace and say um earlier on i'm not sure what you're going through or i'm not sure how you're currently feeling about yourself we can really discuss that i'm here for you but i think you might have been projecting on me um in terms of this and this and that pertaining to this and this and that i would really like to discuss this you know there are so many ways to confront people about what they might be struggling with and when you hear the word confront don't always think about it in an aggressive way in a way that attacks people you can confront with love you can confront with grace you can confront from a place of kindness compassion understanding and once we learn how to do that and make a positive twist on all of these things that have been condition in our minds to have only negative qualities then we can start having meaningful interactions we can start healing as a collective we can start moving consciously towards a knowing and awareness that is just better for the entire community of mental health and those willing to join so yes this is it on anxiety relating to the psychoanalytic approach in the following sessions we will be digging into anxiety um, with other techniques and other theories just to have a wholesome view of what anxiety is i hope something in this video helped you i hope that you're able to meaningfully engage with this and also share it to your loved ones 
um, so that we can create a collective awareness and make this a true shared experience um, yeah thank you so much for your time um, if you have not subscribed guys please do subscribe and turn on the notifications button please like this video and also please please guys please comment and please engage with me on any of my social media platforms it is so important for us to be able to see where we're at with each other you know um where we're at with this content it's very important to just be able to know that the shared experience is a shared experience that um nobody is being lost anywhere or nobody is having questions um please comment below please comment on any of my social media platforms you never know if your comment might just touch somebody or just have somebody relate to it in a world where they thought they were alone yeah thank you guys again for your time and for engaging thank you for um helping me create a safe haven a secure and safe place for mental health discussions mental illness discussions and uh, you know guys we're creating a beautiful beautiful gardens with pretty seeds until next time have a journey